Hey guys, what's the good word? I'm Andre from The Trading Crew and on this channel we talk about stocks I love, stocks you love and most importantly stocks nobody should love. So today I really want to have a quick talk to you about covered calls, selling covered calls and I especially wanted to speak about one of the covered calls that I sold uh, last week here or actually a couple of weeks back um, and how it went and I do want to talk about it because I feel like no other covered call can or will ever get more out of hand as this one has because the stock was just all over the place. So let me start off by, by saying that obviously, um, first off, the call was made on uh, the Virgin Galactic stock space. So I went ahead and purchased on the 7th of May here at a, 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 an average order value of $19.74. So I went ahead and sold a covered call on that with a one week expiration uh, that was expiring on the 14th of May. And I made a, a, a premium of, 14, of $42 on that one uh, option contract. So obviously by selling that options contract, what I managed to do is at the same time, not just cash in the 72, the, the 42 bucks, but also uh, take the average price of that uh, 100 shares down to 19.32. So with that said, I, I went ahead and sold a strike price of $22. Basically, the math here is that if space goes to $22, I end up making $1.84 per share. So times 100, that's $184 on that trade. Uh, obviously, it's not a lot, uh, but it was just an exploratory trade that I took on one of the more riskier stocks that you can, you can trade on. Um, what happened the next few days is what can only be described as absolute madness. So. The next day here, uh, although I had thought initially that uh, space managed to find some horizontal support here, and then obviously it had a bullish pin bar on the day, so I thought we we're all good. Uh, the next couple of days, space managed to lose a lot of, of room here, went as far down as almost $14 from the 19 that we bought. So that's around um, a 32% decrease. and. Um, obviously like what do you do when that happens and I, I feel like this is um, also such an important reason why we do need to talk about uh, options and how they just allow you to make so much more money and uh, so many more better decisions rather than just buying stocks holding and hoping for them to get to where you uh, you initially thought they would so Again, with space going as low as almost uh, 14 bucks on the 11th of May, what I went ahead and did is just acted immediately to do some damage control. So my plan initially was just to sell covered calls on a weekly basis and keep on bringing in 40, 50 dollars and take that um, that uh, average cost per share down and then eventually uh, get assigned and make probably somewhere around four or five hundred dollars on the hundred shares obviously it went completely haywire so i had to readjust my my plan here so what i ended up doing on the uh the 11th of may was to roll out my initial covered call obviously the initial covered call was in the profit like 90% because uh, the stock itself went down 35 percent so you can only imagine so I could uh, buy to close that original uh, uh, covered call. So uh, I bought to close the, the, the call I had sold initially. Um, and then I, I sold to open a new call that I, I, I threw out in the future a bit further because if I would have gone week by week, it would have potentially gotten in, in a scenario where I would have had some issues uh, managing the position here. So what I ended up doing is going ahead all the way out to June 18th, 
um, and then obviously this is the, the 30 to 45 day out range that is pretty uh, perfect for theta ramp up and whatnot so I thought that this would have been the best case scenario since the, on the day um, I think I, I managed to sell this new position when the stock was around $15 so I went ahead and, and um, got the, the strike price way lower to around $20 so again, just by running the math here, we collected another $126 in premium. So that's uh, 1974 initially minus the 0.42 that we collected on the first time around. And again, minus the 126 that we collected the second time around that brings the overall per share average uh, at 1806 so at the end of uh, this next step I had bought essentially the shares at 1806 and then I was planning on selling them at 20 if the stock got there so this would potentially leave me with $142 obviously uh, until you get assigned you can just keep on uh, getting premium in the door and getting premium in the door and if you get assigned you uh, you you make the math happen at that point but in the meantime you just get on uh, with the premiums and I mean if you think about it so I paid uh, 1900 uh, actually no uh, my bad since I, I i i went on with margin here i paid around 700 dollars for the stock here so what i managed to actually do was bring in 168 dollars and now if we divide 168 by the 700 dollars that um, the collateral was uh, it amounts to 24% ROI. So as of that very moment, I was sitting quite nicely. Now, let's get back to the trade here and continue walking through what was happening. So obviously now I was at a position where I had just collected some premium. Uh, we still had around 35 days to go until my options would expire. And again, the stock was down to pretty much 14 bucks. So. Uh, obviously not a very comfortable position to be in which again is one of the main reasons why I usually like playing this uh, strategy on stocks that are either in the Dow Jones Industrial or maybe even in the S&P if I can find one that's a, a good enough price and then I can uh, afford owning a hundred stock and running the wheel on it so with that being said uh, again the situation wasn't to fly uh, on that same day, actually, um, Space managed a pretty nice comeback uh, all the way up to $18. And then during the next following days, it went down again to $15. So what happened next? I, I, I bet you're wondering. So with the next following days passing by, I kept waiting it out. It kept trading within the same 15 to 17 dollar range it kept um, moving slightly higher here so when i saw that it had potential to move even higher on the day when it started reaching 17 and a half dollars um, i decided to roll my position again um, good news was starting to come out um, rumors of the fact that uh, space would test a new flight in the near uh, term so i decided to roll my position out just in case the price does go higher up here so with that being said i went ahead and rolled my uh, position one week further in expiration to june 25th and then i also bumped up the strike price at 21 dollars and now you might be asking yourselves why would i do that well first off by having the strike price at 21 bucks uh, if the stock ends up just mooning all, the, all of a sudden or simply growing uh, nicely and steadily by June 25th, I could potentially cash in $100 more if I got assigned. So th that's the $1 difference from 21 to 20 multiplied by 100 stock, um, by 100 shares. Okay, so with that being said, um, I had to, to pay a debit of 
to roll that position so basically uh, it pretty much amounts to $90 that I would be making if I got assigned the $21 uh, strike price and basically $10 that I would be losing if uh, it, we wouldn't get there but I would also be okay with it because I'd continue selling covered calls against it as the, the stock pr price fluctuates and now um, all that was good and dandy I was happy at that position and obviously pretty much uh, the nightmare scenario with uh, with uh, covered call selling happened thereafter where the stock absolutely mooned uh, it rocketed all the way up to highs of $35 just today. Uh, it might even go higher, uh, even higher than this by the time my call gets expired in, again, June 25th. But I'm probably going to get assigned the call by that time. So I bet a lot of you are really wondering right now, was it really worth it? All this hustle and bustle for uh, basically missing out on quite a lot of upside here. So. I pretty much missed out on potentially 45% um, by, by having this strategy versus just buying, holding and hoping. But you know guys, I'm somebody that would much rather go for slightly smaller consistent gains rather than being the gambler that wants to be one and done uh, and just make one million dollars in one week that's not me i don't want to get there i don't want to risk money uh for the hopes that i will have a one in a million chance of of predicting the future using my my crystal ball i don't have a crystal ball the aquarium of unfortunately doesn't help predict the future so i'm stuck to actually trying to 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 manage proper positions have proper risk management and for me selling cover calls is a fantastic way of having risk management on positions that might go against you so in this case again i am missing out on on all of those dollars above 21 uh eventually i'm gonna get assigned this uh, contract and i will have to sell my hundred dollar my hundred shares at 21 dollars now obviously if I haven't um, had sold the contracts I would have potentially been able to sell at maybe even 31 35 dollars so I'm potentially losing out on 14 dollars per share so uh, 1400 bucks that's not that's not easy money right but uh, that aside I'm absolutely happy with the way this goes and I'm gonna be honest with you here if I can make on every single contract with the amount of contracts that I usually trade if I can make uh, what I'm currently making on this position which is uh, $2.84 so times 100 that's $284 if I can multiply this and make this happen every single day of the week uh, week after week I will take this hands on without any complaints trust me. Uh, it's much better to have consistency and I'm sure you guys know the saying but uh, I'm gonna just try and reinforce it here because time in the market beats timing the market. You might have one uh, lucky streak where you just predict the future like nobody's business and make a lot of money in a lot of in a very short amount of time but trust me the wheel turns and eventually um, the risky situations will get to you and you will end up losing much more than you ever gained if you're not doing proper risk management so that's it from me for today guys i just thought that it'd be really really interesting to, to tell you about a covered call that went pretty much all over the place and was really really hard to predict um, now obviously let me know if you have any questions on it I know it might have uh, been a bit convoluted for some of you guys leave your questions down below in the comments leave a thumbs up subscribe to the channel here if you like the content and I'll see you around next time guys take care have a good one bye bye